to SSU TV. My name is Abraham Deweese. On today's show, we kick off our Seattle Seahawks coverage. We go in depth and break down the offense, the defense, and we'll give our final predictions for this year. With me, as always, is Matthew Page. And Matt, how great is it to have the NFL back? Oh, it's wonderful. Let me tell you, with the way the Mariners and the Sounders the seasons are going right now, it's been terrible to be a Seattle fan this summer. I'm so ready for football. I am excited, too. If you've seen any of our way-too-early predictions, you know that we've covered the Seahawks' opponents in great detail. We now focus on Seattle, starting with the offense. Well, uh, Daryl Bevel, the much-hated and much-lamented offensive coordinator, is returning once again. Uh, the owner of the, uh, the dreaded call there at the uh, goal line uh, that we're not going to go into anymore. Please don't. Uh, Please but don't. anyway, he, he does return uh, as the offensive coordinator, and he runs primarily a power running game. Power running game supported by Russell Wilson's legs and arms, and he we primarily run to set up the pass. Now, uh, last year, we, we did really fairly well at, on offense, and we were number one overall in rush yards per game. We were 10th in points scored. Ninth in, in yards average. We weakened, uh, we were a little weak on the passing yardage. We were, came in 27th in the league on that. But we did address that this offseason. I, I feel like we really did that by acquiring the Jimmy. Big, Jimmy big Graham. Jimmy. So I hear we have a new defensive coordinator. That's right. We have Chris Richard. He used to be the defensive backs coach for mm -hmm. the Legion of Boom. He's now moving into that defensive coordinator position for Dan Quinn. Mm -hmm. But let's face it. Anybody that's a defensive coordinator is really just subordinate to Pete Carroll. All right, let me get into the little bit of the little bit of the defensive philosophy that have led us to become the number one defense in the NFL. We run what's called a four-three under defense. That means we have four defensive linemen, three linebackers, and typically that's how things look. Sometimes you have three linebackers or four linebackers and three defensive linemen. But what we do a little bit different is we have our defensive line moved over so that it creates an imbalance. So mm -hmm. we're not lining up man for man on the, on the offensive line, defensive no. line. We move over, creating a fake weak area, but we really <laughs> put our best players over there. Also, something else that we do is we play what's called a cover three defense. That means three defensive backs, Earl Thomas, the free safety, and the two cornerbacks, each cover zones as, a pest, as opposed to covering individual receivers. They okay. cover these little areas well that's a little bit about the defensive philosophy can we look, go a little bit in depth about as far as the passing game sure uh so as you know uh of course the passing game starts and ends with russell wilson now he's the man he is absolutely the man there's no other word for it but he's a bit of an unconventional quarterback in that he has the amazing ability to scramble and create extra time for his wide receivers to get open to create holes out in there in their secondary uh, he opens up patterns deep by doing that he dodges sacks left and right he is a dynamic player and he is incredible to watch uh, what what we uh, what our our offensive coordinator prefers and what he's more building more towards nowadays is he's likes to bring in the big physical receivers. We saw that in the Super Bowl with Chris Matthews. He was he was wildly successful for us in that, in that game mainly because they weren't able to game plan for him. I think, but he's the big physical guy can can definitely match uh, match up any cornerback, push him out of the way. They're irrelevant. He can beat him on the jump ball. We also have. Paul Richardson on that in that category, and, uh, and 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 we definitely we also picked up the Jimmy Jimmy Graham, Jimmy Graham. who will do that. Now we we also what he likes to do is he wants to build those physical receivers. We're known defensively, as I'm sure you're aware, as a bit of a rough players uh, as far as our how our corners play. They want a little grabby, yeah, a little pushy. grabby. They may they may they're they're in the gray area. They're <laughs> they're not exactly committing fouls, but they're in the gray area. He wants to build an offensive uh, wide receiver core like that. It does that same kind of style. So basically, get the heck out of my way, and I'm going to run down, and I'm going to catch. So uh, other than that, uh, as far as our passing offense, there's one other wrinkle that we're adding this year, which was Tyler Lockett, who was drafted in the fourth round. 
From the University from of? From the University of Kansas State. Yes. And uh, he is going to be, in my opinion, I think he's going to be great. He's going to be uh, filling in the Golden Tate role, in my hmm. opinion, okay. which is the the underneath and the really hard and crazy catches. <laughs> uh, I think he'll impress a lot of people. He's also going to fill in as our punt returner, which will definitely help us out in special teams. So, as far as pass defense, how are we looking there? Well, pass defense. Okay, I was talking a little bit about that. Uh, cover three that we like to run and you were talking a little bit about our grabby pushy <laughs> defensive backs what you're talking about is legion of boom what you're talking about is the granddaddy of the legion of boom cam chancer absolutely old timey db he likes to play the wood on people that cover three defense you also have defensive backs who like to lay the wood on people you're talking about earl thomas you're talking about richard sherman and the rest of the legion of boom great news we just re-signed Bobby Wagner. Yes. One of your favorites. I know you like him. Well, he's a great cover linebacker. He can cover wide receivers. Mm -hmm. Also, something to keep in mind is that our defensive linemen, we operate on a hybrid 4-3-3-4 defensive uh, format, format where we have a end. We have an end who is call, called the Leo, usually Cliff, Cliff Averill or Bruce Irvin, who is – Smaller, but quicker. But just because they're smaller doesn't mean they're strong. Cliff Averill and Bruce Irvin are immensely strong. I'm talking about the kind of guys who are like Julius Peppers, Lawrence Taylor. This position was made for them. Cliff Averill and Bruce Irvin are kind of your discount discount Julius Peppers, and they do the <laughs> job. All right, so that's the pass defense. What everybody, what everybody out there wants to hear about and know what they want to know about is the running game of the uh, Seahawks. Beast mode. Yes. Uh, Marshawn Lynch, he is absolutely without a doubt. I know I know. Russell Wilson is the man, but beast mode. Marshawn Lynch is the heart and soul of this offense. He draws so much coverage, he scares the crap out of defenses. He physically pummels them until they just crumble, and then he's breaking out for 20 and 30-yard rushes in the fourth quarter and embarrassing people. There are people who have gone on the record as saying they hope they don't have to try and face him one-on-one -on -one out in the open field. DB Tyrion Mathau for the Arizona Cardinals said that. Exactly. Uh, so uh, he you know, he came at us last year, 1,300 rushing yards and 13 TDs. Oof. And that doesn't even take into account just the, the how he helped the offense just by be, lining up behind Russell Wilson. Just by being on the field, he changes this team. Robert Turbin is his backup and has developed into a wonderful change of pace back. Uh, he's also e excellent at, at screen passes and, and being that safety valve for, for Russell. Uh, he, he got 16 receptions last year, and he got 186 yards on those 16 receptions, Oof. which is insane if you think about it. <laughs> 10 yards per reception. Yeah, no. So, uh, obviously, of course, running always starts at the offensive line, and we have, the hall, in my opinion, a Hall of Fame offensive line coach in Tom Cable. This man is a genius. He, he helps run a, a zone blocking scheme that he has kind of tweaked and, and perfected and made his own. He uh, he coaches up players in a huge way. J.R. Sweezy, remember him? Oh yeah. He, he didn't he didn't have a snap of offensive blocking in his career until he was a Seattle Seahawk, and they moved him right on over. And now he's one of our most reliable guys on the offensive line. Uh, this offseason, they also, in order to address the fact that we lost Unger and we lost uh, Carpenter to free agency. They, they focused on some athletes that they knew were, were flexible. So we've got three new guys that they're going to be moving into our offensive line this year. And they're, going to, they're hopefully going to help us out, and, and, and they're going to be the kind of next man up, I believe is the, the term you used uh, to describe them. Uh, next man up, they'll, they'll help and fill in in case anyone goes down. They'll be ready to step on in. So we'll have a lot Excellent. more flexibility, hopefully, this year in the offseason. Now, as far as no, I was talking about the offensive line, tell me about the front four on the defense. Okay, so what we're looking at on the front four – are guys like Michael Bennett and hard edge nose tackle Brandon Meebane. You're yeah. looking about you're looking at monsters who can line up in multiple positions, and they're all top notch run defenders. Doesn't mean they can't get after it in the pass, mm -hmm. but they are good run defenders. We just recently lost Tony McDaniel as a cap casualty. He was a defensive tackle who had who's been in the league for nine years mm -hmm. and's done a fantastic job. Helped us get to a couple Super Bowls. But he's north of 30 right now and may, not, may be 
the best person to release so some of the young draftees can come up and take his spot. Bobby Wagner, middle linebacker, all pro, just re-signed. This guy, probably the second best linebacker in all of football. I'm going to put Luke Keekley maybe one half step up above that. Close, yeah. What we're looking at also is probably one of the best weak side linebackers. So the Will linebacker, K.J. Wright, amazing player. He can also play any other position mm -hmm. on that linebacking court. Well, these guys, they can cover, but they can also lay the wood. You know who else can lay the wood? The Legion of Boom. They didn't <laughs> get that name for no reason at all. Nah. They like to come and come hard and take people out. Corners and safeties are not afraid to play close to the line of scrimmage. And Earl Thomas, as small as he is, he packs a wall. Oh. Cam Chancellor packs a wall. Richard Sherman, technically technically good tackler. Oh. You know, so is so is uh, Therold Simon. Well, that's that's the pass defense. That's the run defense in a nutshell. What I want to look at now, if we if you will, uh -huh. is how we're going to do for the entire season. Okay. What do you have the Seahawks doing throughout this 2015 season? All right. Well, I actually have taken a look ahead, and I believe they're going to finish 13 and three. Okay. Uh, I think they're going to do very well this season. They, with the addition of the Jimmy, <laughs> uh, I think they're going to have two losses inside the division: one to the Ram and one to the Cardinals. Um, I do obviously think we'll sweep the 49ers. Good. Uh, I think that we'll take the division. And I think the Cardinals might pull off the wild card because the NFC West, once again, will be the choice division of the of the cream of the crop of the of the NFL. And I do believe Green Bay will be meeting us again in the NFC Championship game. And the honest truth is, is that I can't pick a winner there. I I I I don't know. The way this last game went, it was so insane. It, it we needed four Hail Marys to win and we got four Hail Marys. I can't <laughs> predict it. So, uh so I'm just going to say the winner of that game goes on to the Super Bowl and beats the Indianapolis Colts. Okay, very cool. Now, I have a very similar projection to you with you. Mm -hmm. Uh I have the Seahawks going 11 and 5. Okay. I have the St. Louis Rams taking the division. Uh, but we lose on a tiebreaker. Okay. Now, Arizona, the Arizona Cardinals, they're going to also get into the playoffs. So I have that as well. All right. And it's an all-NFC West, <laughs> not down, drag out playoffs. But I see the Seahawks facing the Green Bay Packers and losing to them in the NFC Championship this Ooh. time. I then see Green Bay taking out Denver in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Well, Seahawks fans... The NFL's back. Seattle's set for another championship run. To stay updated, visit our website at seattlesideup.com for real-time previews, reviews, and Seahawks breaking news. And be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube to get our latest TV episodes. Also like us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. For SSU TV, I am Abraham Deweese. This is Matthew Page. Thanks for joining us, and go Hawks! Go Hawks!